Hello! Day 49 of 100. We have almost reached the halfway mark. We're gonna do a bit of React tonight. As we got some time and we need to get at least our hour in. <laughs> it's been a crazy weekend thus far. <laughs> been trying to balance things, been trying to balance reacting with React. <laughs> and I've also been trying to balance actually relaxing. But come the week, I plan to go all out. And like I said, we should be able to cover all of React, all of Redux, and hopefully both React and Redux, if we're lucky. Okay, so let us continue. We left off with properties or props and we're going to continue with them. So we can use prop types to define the props you expect. React provides useful type checking features to verify that components receive props of the correct type. For example, your application makes an API call to retrieve data that you expect to be in an array, which is then passed to a component as a prop. You can set prop types on your component to require the data to be of type array. This will throw a useful warning when the data is of any other type. It's considered a best practice to set prop types when you know the type of a prop ahead of time. You can define a prop types property for a component in the same way you define default props. Doing this will check that props of a given key are present with a given type. Here's an example to require the type function for a prop called handle click. My components dot prop type equal to handle click. Um, prop types dot is required. Uh, in the example above, the prop types dot path checks that handle click is a function. Adding is required tells React that handle click is a required property for that component. You'll see a warning if that prop isn't provided. Also notice that func represents function. Among seven JavaScript primitive types, function and boolean written as bool are the only two that are unus that use unusual spelling. Right, so funk and bool. In addition to the primitive types, there are other types available. For example, you can check that a prop is a React element. Please refer to the documentation for all, the, for all of the options. As of React version 15.5, prop types is imported independently from React like this. Import React prop types from React. Define prop types for the items component to require quantity as a prop and verify that is it is of a type number. Okay, so we need to do So we have to do items dot prop types equal to um, to require quantity quantity. So we need to call quantity prop types dot number 
is required. Is that how we will do it? We will, yes! Nice! A lot of type checking. Um, so prop access props using this dot props. The last several challenges covered the basic ways to pass props to child components. But what if the child components that you're passing a prop to is an ES6 class component rather than a stateless functional component? The ES6 class component uses a slightly different convention to access props. Anytime you refer to a class component within itself, you use the this keyword. To access props within a class component, you preface the code that you use to access it with this. For example, if an ES6 class component has a prop called data, you write this.props.data in JSX. Render an instance of the return temp password component in the parent component reset password. Okay, so render an instance of return temp password in the parent component reset password. Okay, so we need to render return temp password like that. Here, give return temp password a prop of temp password and assign it a value of a string that is at least eight characters long. Give a prop. Think you do it like this, wouldn't you? Equal to your new password. Or well, let's just do new password so it's one line. Within the child, return temp password. Access the temp password prop within the strong tags to make sure the user sees the temporary password. Within the strong tags. Okay, um, so we need to do... This dot props dot... What do we call it? Temp password. Oh, look at that! So your temporary password is... New password. So add something random there. There we go. Review using props with stateless functional components. Except for the last challenge, you've been passing props to stateless functional components. These components act like pure functions. They accept props as input and return the same view every time they are passed uh, with the same props. You may be wondering what state is and the next challenge will cover it in more detail. Before that, here's a review of the terminology for components. And before that, hello Vironi. <laughs> How's it going with React? Um, I don't know. I feel like I'm getting it and I feel like I'm just winging it and like barely getting by. It's, it's confusing. Not React, just the feeling that I feel. It might just be because it's taking something that I'm used to and familiar with and doing something completely different with it. But uh, we'll see. I think I haven't built anything with React yet and that's probably where the confusion is coming from. So I would either have to start building something now, like just a test React thing for myself, or try to just push through until I get to the project section. But uh, I mean, it's okay. I'm, I'm not as struggling as bad as the, uh, the JavaScript algorithm stuff. Like, I don't think I've really struggled yet. We'll see how it goes. Um, I should be done with React and Redux within this week. That's what I'm aiming for. And then there's the whole React and Redux together combined. 
Not sure if I can finish that as well, but I will at least have covered React and Redux this week. Um, so a stateless functional component is any function you write which accepts props and returns JSX. A stateless component... Okay, so I need to pay attention to that. So a stateless functional component is any function you write which accepts props and returns JSX. A stateless component, on the other hand, is a class that extends React component but does not use internal state covered in the next challenge. Finally, a stateful component is any component that does not maintain its own internal state. You may see stateful components referred to simply as components or React components. A common pattern is to try to minimize statefulness and to create stateless functional components wherever possible. Right, which just accepts props and returns JSX. This helps contain your state management to a specific area of your application. In turn, this improves development and maintenance of your app by making it easier to follow how changes to state affect its behavior. React and Redux over a week. Not sure it's possible. <laughs> we'll see. Because I'm gonna be spending, like, I'm gonna try to aim for about eight hours again, like I used to in the beginning. So what's that? 40 hours? Maybe? Just maybe? We're almost about halfway done with React now. The code editor has a campsite component that renders a camper component as a child. Define the camper component and assign it default props of name camperbot inside the camper component. Okay, so hold on. Code editor has a campsite component that renders a camper component as a child. Right. You find the camper component and then assign it a default prop as a prop of. Okay, so we had to do that inside of here, if I'm not mistaken. There was default um, I'm gonna get used to working with props. That's why I feel I need to um, create a project. I'm sure there are like plenty of them that I can use that I can just work with. But uh, projects helps a lot, yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, anyway, so we need to do camper. Wait, we can't set the default here, can we? We need to do that outside of it, right? So we would do camper dot um, default props equal to. Um, default props of name. So I should just have name, camper, bot. That be it. Now this it's like a little confusing because they refer to it as modules and components, but this would be an object, wouldn't it, in JavaScript? So it's like camper is the object. We basically create an object called camper. So if I console.log camper, we don't get anything. Hold on. What happens when we call camper? Hello. Nothing. And if I do camper.name, ah, I wonder if it's like behind the scenes because React, I don't know. But I assume that's how we set a default prop from what I can remember. 
Then, once we've done that, inside the camper component, render any code that you want, but make sure to have one P element that includes only the name value that is passed in as a prop. Um. Okay. You don't have a camper component at all? You didn't create it? Oh, it's returning camper. You're right. You're right, you're right, you're right. You are right. Um... Okay, so from what I remember, it will be somewhere from here. Right, we can start a new one. We have the constructor. And we call props super props on that. We're not dealing with state there. So I can literally just call um, camper, right? Some people define prototypes and default props after they write all their code. I'm going to have to do it before the render actually. So camper, right. I'm trying to remember that takes a um, prop, right? I'm getting so confused, not with React, but between React and JavaScript. Like what a function is and what a component is. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to look at a comparison between the two. Yeah, and the word functional component sounds like a function, right? Like JavaScript function. So that re renders camper. So I can't have camper inside of it, inside of campsite, because that's how we did it before. We never had one outside. Oh right, like the let, let camper equal to props. Yeah, I remember that. With the arrow function. So I can't have that inside though? And don't I have to do let? Const actually, yeah. So const camper equal to props. I remember doing something like that, but why can't I do it inside of the... Why can't I do it inside? Ideally it would be in another file. So I would have to have it outside, like that, and then I'll have to return a value. Would you use this then? This dot like name for example, in that case that I would need? You would pass props to it, and one of the props would have names, so I'm thinking this dot name maybe? Oh, it's props.name. And when you say return JSX, um, do you mean using the uh, those things around it? Or is the return just like that fine? So then you would call camper and you would give it props. So here I could do... Hmm. name equal to Bob or something, right? Oh, you would do it like that. Okay, so that is JSX. I just gotta remember the uh, 
the strings around it. But now we're getting an error, unexpected token. It's not that, I thought it was that. I wrap it in an, in an HTML tag. Oh, sorry, um, the chat that I'm seeing at asterisked out your stuff. Sorry, I didn't see your P tag. I just saw on Twitch's chat now. Okay, so we're returning props.name. So that doesn't need to be in the braces, does it? Camper.default props is camperbot. Here we're saying camper name is Bob and nothing's rendering because Finally define prop types on the camper component to require a name to be provided as a prop and verify that is a type of string. It should be in brackets ideally, but it's not required. Okay. But I'll just get into the habit of doing it. Same as like semicolons, right? Why is that an issue now? Huh, apparently I can't do it that way. Why do you need Bob? I was gonna set a value other than the default one. So instead of camper bot, it's gonna say Bob. Oh, in brackets, right, right. Not braces. That is what I always remember, yes. Because then I can go split it on a new line, like that. Right, 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 right. Then somewhere here I have to do camper.proptypes equal to, um, what was it? Name, right? Name to be provided. And it has to be of a type string, so prop types dot string. And then we need a required somewhere. Is required, I think it was. Is it is required? I think. I'm just going off of memory now. I literally just saw that in the previous example. I think it was that, yeah. I'm gonna have to really get used to the the syntax of um, of all this, like closing and opening. But that's fine. Do I need like a semicolon there? I don't think I do. Right? That's a confusing part where you don't need a semicolon because it's just an object. Remove is required. Why? It's required. That's the requirement. To require a name to be provided as a prop and verify that it's of type string. So prop types dot string is required. No, what I mean is they literally taught us about is required in the previous example. So that's why. Literally in the previous one. And usually when I show us that, then they want us to use it in the next one. And you said I don't need to add Bob there. But why camper is undefined? The camper component should include default props. We have that. Which assigns the string camper bot to the key name. The camper component should include prop types which require the name prop to be which require the name prop to be of type string. Yeah, 
Here's what I mean, Verani. Um, was it this one? Was it here? I think it was here. It was the previous one. This one. Yeah, 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 this one is required. Okay, so you think I shouldn't have is required in there. So just prop types dot string. Uh, but now what's the issue with the rendering it? Do they didn't specify anything about rendering to the DOM and they usually give us an ID that we can render to. Am I just missing something? The campsite component should render. The camper component should render. Are we sure that camper shouldn't be inside of all of that? Like having it in here? No? That doesn't work. It should be above. Oh right, because we're calling it and it's empty now, right? But I'm used to doing everything inside of the um, the class. So you sure it's supposed to be like this? Prop types is not defined. Oh, isn't prop types uh, supposed to be capitalized? Like that? Yeah, we're getting somewhere now. It was capitalized P. Prop types. So we got props.name. <laughs> Do I have to add that? Like that? There we go. I was missing telling it, hey, that needs to be in JSX, not like literally props.name. This is weird that it's outside of it, but okay. The camper component should include prop types which require the name prop to be of type string. Dot is required. Is it is required? Was it is required now? Right. Um, because it is another component, it is just a separate component. Prop types, not prop types. Oh, this is confusing. What do you mean? So prop types is a component, but prop types. <laughs> what? Prop types dot string, but camper prop types. How? Why? How does that work? I'm so confused. Hold on, give me a second quick. Okay, sorry. Um, so, Virani, why is one K 
capitalized and one is camel case like sorry that's a part that i'm still not understanding i get that capital would imply it's a um a what do you call it a component right It is the way to do it. <laughs> is it just the way? That's it. That's the answer. It's just the way. Oh, no. Is it honestly the way? Is that the only way? Is that the only way we do it? To run type checking on the props for a component, you can assign the special prop types property. Prop types exports a range of valid data that can be used to make sure the data you received is valid. Do you not think that's confusing? Like, obviously, once you understand it, do you not think it's a bit weird that literally the only difference between those two things that handle things differently is literally the uh, capitalization? So like that. Wait, was it the other way around? Was it this way? Was it? No, wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Hold on. That's the lowercase one. It's a nice best practice to use it. But it is confusing when you try to understand, yeah. Why am I still failing then? Is Required? Just I, I don't think I still need. Hey, you see, it was Firani. Take it back. Look, I need it. Is required. You said I don't. If I run the test, I say I failed. It doesn't work. I add is required, and then I pass. <laughs> you see, it's not the way it's read. It, sounds clear to me that I need to check that it's required and like I said it's because we needed to do that two, uh, two modules back and knowing FCC now they want you to redo things <laughs> uh, I'm gonna be right back Nice. Okay, we did that. Whew. Now we have to create a stateful component. <laughs> Jeez, I'm going to have to like go back and forth between these things, honestly. How did you manage? Like, did you also struggle a little bit in the beginning? What did you do? How did you get React in? One of the most important topics in React is state. State consists of any data your application needs to know about. That can change over time. You want your apps to respond to state changes and present an updated UI when necessary. Oh, so it's almost like an on on event type thing a state react offers a nice solution for state management of modern web applications you create state in a react component by declaring a state property on the component class in its constructor this initializes the component with state when it is created the state property must be set to a JavaScript object. Declaring it looks like this, this.state. See, that's where I was getting used to the this part. This.state is, so yeah, so the constructors are like constructors. I think I get confused because I'm barely grasping, you know, JavaScript as a whole. And now we're doing things that is like JavaScript, but is not like JavaScript. So in these cases, the constructor and the this keyword makes sense. So it's leveraging JavaScript and then doing some other funky stuff.
I hope they explain asynchronicity of this set state. <laughs> Sounds like I'll need that, huh? You have access to the state object throughout the life of your components. You can update it, render it in your UI, and pass it as props to child components. The state object can be as complex or as simple as you need it to be. Note that you must create a class component by extending react.component in order to create state like this. Okay, so we need to extend react component to get state. There is a component in the code editor that is trying to render a name property from its state. However, there is no state defined. Initialize the component with state in the constructor and assign your name to a property of name. My name? So we need to do this dot state. Um, do we do things inside of the state? Because we've got name, so it would be name. That's confusing. I want to... So I'm going to put that in. How about that? Oh, look, it's my name. <gasps> um, so the confusing part is... I thought state would be something like if error or if displayed, you know, like state, actual state. But this just literally looks like an object where this object has a key of name. Then you're going this dot state dot name. You're literally just ab accessing an object. That's what it looks like from JavaScript's point of view. On the outside of not really understanding React, like why state? Like that could have literally been anything. That could have been, you know, names or whatever. State could be anything then, couldn't it? Why specifically do we use state? You know what I'm trying to get at, right? In JavaScript, this would literally just be an object with a key name, then you would call it key, uh, sorry, um, what do you call it? Object.name. So is it just a general thing they refer to as state as anything that you put in it? It has special things, okay. I guess we'll figure it out later. You will learn it, yeah. Render state in the user interface. Once you define a component's initial state, you can display any part of it in the UI that is rendered. If a component is stateful, it will always have access to the data in the state in its render method. You can access the data with this.state. If you want to have if you want to access a state value within the return of the render method, you have to enclose the value in curly braces. Wow, so many things to remember. Um, state is changeable data and you can do a lot with that. State is one of the most powerful features of components in React. It allows you to track important data in your app and render a UI in response to changes in this data. If your data changes, your UI will change. React uses what is called a virtual DOM to keep track of changes behind the scenes. When state data updates, it triggers a re-render of the components using the data, including child components that received the data as a prop. React updates the actual DOM, but only where necessary. This means you don't have to worry about changing the DOM. You simply declare what the UI should look like. So if I had like a little, um, like an incremental clicker game or something like that, you know, tracking like stats and that, that's something I, I could use in that sense eh, to update the UI. Note that if you make a component stateful, no other components are aware of its state. Its state is completely encapsulated, or local to that component, unless you pass state data to a child component as props. This notion of encapsulated state is very important because it allows you to write certain logic, then have that logic contained and isolated in one place in your code. In the code editor, my component is already stateful. Define an h1 tag in the components render method, which renders the value of name from the component state. Okay, so we want to do h1, um, which renders the value of name. So isn't it my component dot state dot name? And then obviously need to have that in braces in order for it to actually do that. Or oh, in this case, it's this dot state dot name. Forgot. We're not calling the component. Ah, oh, so many things to remember. Because it's inside of a constructor, we need to refer to it as this. 
You know where I get confused, Veroni? Is that, you know when you create a class and a constructor, you know like that whole example that they did with animals and birds and whatever, you know what I'm referring to, right? Then you go new, new bird or whatever, and then you access whatever that variable's name was assigned to. Like that's how I'm used to instances. And in this case, it's using classes and constructors, but you never instance them like that. It's just weird. Like, if that's class my component, could I go test equal to new my component? Like, what what would happen if I did that? You know what I mean? Like, you get what I'm going for, right? Just get going further, right? Okay, so I think I did that. Wait, is that all I need to do? Literally just that? Yeah, there we go. Render state in the user interface another way. There's another way to access state in a component. In the render method, before the return statement... Hold on, hold on, hold on. I just I just realized something. Does that mean where I had this.state? If I change the value inside of that, it would the render would update based on what that value is. That's what it's referring to, right? Because it's saying it's monitoring, but in essence, all you're really doing is if that value changes, that's what it's monitoring, right? And then that value is based on that value. Behind the scenes, is it just somehow, it's got like, I don't know, a set interval or some other kind of magic that it's working with. Uh, so in the render method, before the return statement, you can write JavaScript directly. For example, you could declare functions, access data from state or props, perform computations on this data and so on. That sounds like something I would need. Then you can assign any data to variables which you have access to in the return statement. In the my component render, define a const called name. And set it equal to the name value in the component state. So this dot state dot name. Because you can write JavaScript directly in this part of the code, you don't have to enclose this reference in curly braces. Okay. Next, in the return statement, render this value in an h1 tag using the variable name. Okay, so h1, I have to do name, don't I? And then change that. Wow. So I can literally change that to something else and it updates the view. I think I'm starting to understand this, Veroni. Because if I wanted to do this in pure JavaScript and HTML, I can change my variable, right? But then I will have to go document.getElementById, wherever that element is, and set the inner HTML to that new value. Whereas this, I define everything once. Now all I do is just change that variable and it displays, right? That's pretty much it, right? That's what React's doing. It's cool. Set state with this dot set state. Here we go. This is what you wanted, Verani. The previous challenges covered component state and how to initialize state in the constructor. There's also a way to change the component state. React provides a method for updating component state called setState. You call the setState method within your component class like so, this.setState, passing in an object with key value pairs. The keys are your state properties and the values are the updated state data. For instance, if we are storing a username in state and wanted to update it, it would look like this, this.setState username. Lewis. React expects you to never modify state directly. Instead, always use this.setState when state changes occur. Also, you should note that React may batch multiple state updates in order to improve performance. What this means is that state updates through the setState method can be asynchronous. There is an alternative syntax for the setState method which provides a way around this problem. This is rarely needed, but it's good to keep in mind. There is a button element in the code editor which has an onClick handler. This handler is triggered when the button receives a click event in the browser and runs the handleClick method defined on my component. 
Within the handle click method, update the component state using this.setState. Set the name property in setState to equal the string React Rocks. Within the handle click method, update the component state. So I'd have to do this dot set state. And we're updating name. Set the name property in the state to equal the string react rocks. Just like that. Is that all, I think? Click me. Oh, wow, look at that. But then I can change that to something else. But that's an issue that I've seen in a lot of React apps. Wait, it goes back to its state again? Oh, because I edited it, right? And the state is being kept. What states? You mean the one that I just updated now? Pretty cool, huh? Hmm. I like that. Nice, Veroni. So between this and the other one, I'm, I'm a bit confused. We use state. So they first showed us how to use state, but then they're like, don't use state, use set state, right? So was it you don't want to use state as the previous example? They were just showing us we could do it that way, but we should use set state instead. You use state in constructor. Oh, you mean the this dot state? Oh, this is when you're updating the state, because we weren't updating, we we're just changing it. What were we doing before? Hold on, I'm a bit confused now. We had set state, this dot state. Define a const name. Oh, because it was just the initial value that we changed, and then we were displaying that initial value. This is changing that initial value. Yeah, 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 exactly. Okay. Bind this, finally. I've never worked with bind before. Bind this to a class method. In addition to setting and updating states, you can also define methods for your component class. A class method typically needs to use the this keyword so it can access properties on the class, such as state and props, inside the scope of the method. There are a few ways to allow your class methods to access this. One common way is to explicitly bind this in the constructor, so this becomes bound to the class methods when the component is initialized. You may have noticed the last challenge used this.handleClick equal to this.handleClick.bind this for its handle click method in the constructor. Then when you call a function like this.setState within your class method, this refers to the class and will not be undefined. And you'll not be working with bind because we use error functions in methods now. <laughs> so it's something good to know, but we won't do it. How does bind work? Like, I know it's being phased out. I just, I never understand it. Why is it that complex? So the this refers to the parent, right? So we can access handle click on the parent. But what is bind this? Why, wh why the bind? Note that this keyword is one of the most confusing aspects of JavaScript. It's not confusing, the bind is confusing. <laughs> binds this to the thing that is clicked. So binds this, the new, the component. So it binds the component to the thing that is clicked. Oh, okay. 
The code editor has a component with a state that keeps track of an item count. It also has a method which allows you to increment this item count. However, the method doesn't work because it's using the this keyword that is undefined. Why is it undefined? Let's figure that out. This.state. This should be my component. State should be that. Dot item count. So why is it undefined? I want to understand that because before we were able to do this dot state and then access the property that used to work before. Why doesn't it work anymore? What makes it not work essentially? Because look here, yeah, for example, we can do this dot state dot item count that works. Why doesn't that work? It won't be the this you need. Yeah, I get that. But like, why? It won't be the this you need, but why? For example, look here. This dot state dot item count. That works, right? That works as expected. This is exactly the same, but it doesn't work as expected. What makes it not work is what I'm asking. Is it because of how we're adding item count? But yeah, anyway, to fix this, we need to add item as its own this. Oh. Fix it by explicitly binding this to the add item method. You mean there? We go this dot add item, right? Or not? No, I know we won't have to bind, but they want us to, to bind. So how do we bind? Is it not this dot add item? Where am I calling add item? I'm not calling it anywhere, am I? Line 22? This state. But that's just getting the item count value from the state. I'm not calling it anywhere, it's weird. You need to call it, yeah, because I'm not calling it yet on 20. Do I literally have to do an on click? How do we do it again? It's not. Yeah, it was button on click equal to add item. And it needs to be like this, right? But then we have to do add item. But now something's missing because we have to do this. So this dot add item dot bind this. Or just this dot add item. Okay, but then we have to bind add item in the constructor. Where do you bind it in the constructor again? You mean like this? No, that doesn't work. Um, what happens if I click now? Nothing happens. Because this is not the this we need, like you said, right? Oh, that works. There we go. That's pretty cool. 
I would have to do several lines to do this. Wow. Isn't that cool? We're not getting any rewards or perks, are we? <laughs> this game sucks. I clicked 50 times, I got nothing, Barani. Uh, thankfully, we won't be using Binder. But I feel I'm still going to cover it. Because you never know, you might need it. But arrow functions, huh? So use state to toggle an element. You can use state in React applications in more complex ways than what you've seen so far. One example is to monitor the status of a value. Then render the UI conditionally based on this value. There are several different ways to accomplish this and a code editor shows one method. Ooh, you did, uh, I didn't realize your guide covered React, Veroni. I thought it was just the JavaScript stuff. You also got React. It's under advanced area, I think, right? Yeah, advanced theory. React. Now, if only you had like little links, like, uh, you know, like on Wikipedia, where it gives you an overview of where what is. Because there's a lot here. I guess I could use just the search part. Hey, and you figured out how to use the anchored links to link me directly to it. I know I didn't click on your link. I could have just clicked on your link. <laughs> I know, I know. <laughs> Not that I didn't want to. I was uh, remembering that you had that thing and then I saw the link. Right. Okay, this dot hand... Oh! So you change this dot handle click to this dot handle click dot bind this. Interesting. So you literally changed handle click to be bind this. Wow. Is that one way of doing it or is that the way of doing it? That's cool. My component has a visibility property which is initialized to false. The render method returns one view if the value of visibility is true and a different view if it is false. Currently there is no way of updating the visibility property in a component state. The value should toggle back and forth between true and false. There is a click handler on the button which triggers a class method called toggle visibility. Define this method so the state of visibility toggles the, to the opposite value when the method is called. If visibility is false, the method set sets it to true and vice versa. Finally, click the button to see the conditional rendering of the component based on a state. Don't forget to bind this. Well, thanks to Varani, um, we will be fine. So we do this dot... Do we have a method for the button? Toggle visibility? We have to create toggle visibility, don't we? Wait, wait. What's toggle visibility? The class method. Does it exist? Define this method. Okay, so meaning we have to create the method. What's wrong now? What do I... What's wrong with my method? Oh, you're complaining... Huh? Oh, I didn't finish this. This dot toggle visibility equal to this... Um, forgot the bind. Okay, so this dot toggle visibility dot bind this, right? We good? <laughs> Alright, I'm off to bed. It was nice chatting with you. Cool, man. Yeah, isn't it getting quite late for you? Six hours ahead, if I'm not mistaken. What's that? Like... Four? Three, four in the morning for you? Five! God! I'm I'm always amazed why where are you again? Because I'm confused that in Russia 
Oh yeah, I guess because Russia is so expansive, you're on like the far end of Russia, so it gets later and later, doesn't it? Or are you early ahead? So if you were like close to... Was it Crimea? No, I don't think it was Crimea. Crimea is the closest to like the the ocean side, close to Norway, right? Cheetah? Cheetah? So I'm willing to bet you're like on the far end of Russia. On the other side, and that would explain why the time zone is so bad. Yep, there you go. You like by Mongolia. It's a globe now. I thought the Earth was flat. What is this? Why is this round? Isn't this weird? It's a globe now. They updated that. That's cool. Oh right, because I think you have Moscow, Moscow, right? We got Belarus, Ukraine. These are the ones closest to me. Those are the ones that would have the same time as me. So if you were in Moscow, you would be like the same time as me or like one hour ahead of me. But because you're all the way at the other end of Russia, because we forget that Russia is freaking massive continent on its own. Yeah. So you're really close to Korea. Wow. You just jumped the border. <laughs> Over here. <laughs> you like really on the edge of the border, aren't you? That's crazy. Well, obviously, I don't know how far these things are. Russia is massive. This could be several hundred kilometers from here to the border. You really close to China? Do you ever go to China, like, to visit? Buy some stuff? I can't tell the distance. I don't have a scale, but hold on. Let me compare it to... Oh, that is a few hours away. You're about like five hours away from China, if I'm not mistaken, based on the scale. Um, we can like travel there for weekends. This is four or five hundred kilometers. Okay. Wow. Yeah, you have it very different to the other Russians, huh? Is this still part of Russia over here? Down here? I see. I like how Russia is just like made this thing. Is this Russia too? Like, did they just hug this part of the territory? So like, this is also Artyom? Ar Artyom? Artyom? Vladi... Vostok. What? They... Russia just hugged this part. <laughs> oh my god, is this Russian too? No, it's not. Okay, it ends here. So here is the official end. I thought it like goes and it continues. <laughs> Wow. So you guys share the river, the lake? That's funny. You guys share a lake. How does that work? They couldn't just include it into Russia's side? How does that work? So if you're swimming on this lake, you cross over there, you're in China. Will you get arrested? Do they, do they have like border patrol, I assume? So you can't just like swim there, I guess. It's like a hazard. The border is literally on the river. <laughs> wow. So we wouldn't really want to swim there, huh? It would be a bit dangerous. For accidental crossing into the territory. <laughs> That's cool, dude. Thanks for the geography lesson. <laughs> now I better understand why you're so far ahead jeez you're in the future but yeah it could be worse it could be in Australia where's the line somewhere here right Australia I think New Zealand is on the line if I'm not mistaken it is regulated okay yeah it seems your biggest mass of water is down here huh Lake Baikal looks massive holy shit you got an island there, even. Big Ushkan. How big is that, dude? It's the biggest water source? Does it ever get frozen? Because Siberia, right? Which side? Up here. 
Watch me know nothing about geography. So it gets cold here. Up north. The biggest freshwater lake in the world. And then you got the Caspian Sea here, which is not connected to the sea at all. So why is it a sea? That's what's confusing. Like, look at the size of the Caspian Sea. But... Okay, never mind. I was going to say that that lake was bigger. <laughs> okay, that's not quite. But that's pretty big as well. Lake Balakash. Is that Russia as well? Hold on, Kazakhstan, no, part of Kazakhstan, right? Similar, not quite. Russians will hate me if I say that, God. Uzbekistan, Turkmenistan, Afghanistan, all the stans are there. We think of Irkutsk as a close city, but it's more than a thousand kilometers away from us. Okay. Chuchki <laughs> Sea. I like that. Severnaya Zemlya. Sever. Severnaya. What does that mean again? Because Sever. Isn't that south? Or am I thinking of something else? Does that mean it's a south land? Severnaya. I'm thinking of Sever. Sevoroy Zemelski Gosudarstievni Prirodni Zakaznik. Is Prirodni? Is that a reserve? A nature reserve? They had a revolution here on an island? Pioneer Island? Uh, join on Discord? Yeah, sure. Are you on Discord now? Are you on my... You're not in one of the channels. I'll hop into the uh, coding live stream. Or... That one, I guess I could join there. Hello! Hey, what's up? Uh, good, you. Did I say that right? Is it the uh, South... Uh, Southland? Severnaya Zemlya? Yeah, that was perfect actually. Your reading was perfect. Oh yeah? Um, but, th but, but the meaning? Um, yeah, that's... Park, sort of. I, I'm not sure how you call it in English. Uh, it's like um, a reserved space. You can't do anything there. Okay, so protected. It's protected, right? And so that's part of Russia. A little bit to the left. Mm -hmm. And a little bit to the left, there is an island which is called Nova Zemlya, I think, um, something like this. And this is the place where many nuclear bombs were tested. Oh wow! Nuclear. W where close to? Uh, close to. Left. It should be on the on the left. Is it large? Is it um, close to the Com Komsomolet island? Ah, uh, sort of. So it's it's this you know long long island. On oh. The left. Yeah, I see it. The the Severny Island. Uh, this one. Ah, uh, this one. Sort of. The one that I'm. Oh, is it the one that I'm on now? Um, Can you well, see it? Well, I'm not sure if it's the island, but it's a little. Oh bit right, it's not marked. It almost there. looks like vertebrae. You you know the vertebrae and the human. I think of Colin. You think of. What? I'm not. I'm not sure how you say it. Wait, sorry. Column. It should be column. Column. Um, column. Uh, the thing in, in your in uh, 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 intestine. Oh, colon. Yes, yes, colon. Right. So yeah. 
so you can see uh, where I live. Uh, it's pretty much uh, on the north. More, we call it Far East. So th this uh, this part where I live is called Far East. Wow. Oh. So China and Japan. Well, if you if you look at Vladivostok, Vladivostok, yeah. in Russian. So it's really close to Japan or South Korea and people travel. Yeah, because you just go across there on, uh, I guess, by boat or ferry. And, and we have a lot of Japanese cars here, so it's like... See that close, yeah. Um, that's really yeah, cool. Yeah, we, we just ship it. And that's why we, we have many... Um, right. Oh, oh is that, uh, is that uh, purple uh, area the demilitarized zone, I think? Oh, no. They just no 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 demilitarized. I know where it is the line, Sorry. but there's a purple. <laughs> the zone. Yeah, it's hmm? the line. I'm not sure what this purple thing is. Yeah, I know that line. That's where <laughs> you don't cross. But then there's a purple line. Maybe it's to show the territory of what belongs to Korea. Maybe? I don't know. But actually. Pyongyang is not included in it. That's weird. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, that's so cool. So you could literally be at Vladi, uh, Vladivostok and just cross to Sapporo. Yeah, but the thing is, traveling by land to Vladivostok yeah. is kind of, you know, far away because, you know, this, we have... Oh, you have to go all around? ...chunk of Chinese, yeah, Chinese land. Wait, so you'd either have to go all the way around from where you are, or you'd have to pass straight through China. Can fly straight to China. We we had um, we had railroad, but it it was like 100 years ago or something. Is that the Trans-Siberian no. Railroad? No, I'm talking about. Um, oh my God! In Russian, we call it Kvazhade, um, but I'm not sure what is what what's like in. Hmm. Trans a lot of it's Chinese Eastern, Chinese Eastern Railroad. Okay, but I took that down. So, this is my city. I, I'm not really from that city, I'm from a little town. Most and obviously it's hard to tell based on the size, because Russia is so big. You look at Cheetah and you think, oh, it's tiny, but you actually get in there. It's not that small, is it? It's, it's 300,000 people. Yeah, it's quite big. But you say Vladivostok is bigger. Vladivostok is bigger. I think it has million. Or it looks smaller, but, but it's obviously like... it's more dense, I guess. It is, and it it's really widespread uh, along the coast. What is the rayon the again? That word is familiar to me. Rayon. Checked. The what? So what do you say, uh, Virani? So... Hear me? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you. I was trying to figure out what Rayon is, because I heard that before. It is, it, it is a it is a district. Oh, district. Okay, so yeah, Leninsky district, basically Lenin Lenin district. So you got a Soviet yeah. district? Is that like the old Soviet Union? Sovietsky yes. Rayon. Yeah, sort of. Oh, I actually uh, want to see have, what it I've, looks I've like. Been to Vladivostok. I've been to Vladivostok only like... ...life. But... Oh yeah, I was gonna say, you guys have Yandex, not Google, so that's probably the reason why I can't get Google Street Maps, right? Can you can actually you can actually have Google Street Maps uh, right near my? Uh, no, I mean in the specific area my where home. I was, close to Clad B14, Chasovenia Vokresnia Kristova. It looks like a church or something. Chasovenia, Chasovenia Vokresnia Kristova, Church of the Christova, yes. Christ. Reborn okay. or something. So that's probably why I can't get there because like probably restricted or protected, but I can get plus outside Wow, so many trees. That's what I love about Russia. It's just it's so green
Oh, at uh, least I know the difference. That yeah. I can link you my uh, or the place where I live. <laughs> okay, I love how the stream just changed from React to <laughs> we oh. discovered Russia. <laughs> I'm I'm really I'm here for frequently here recently. So what are you doing there? Like spend. studying or just a little bit. A bit by bit and being lazy playing Dota. Oh, okay, fair enough. It's just, it's just, I'm not staying very late. So I can just like pop somewhere here and view it out. Um, oh wow, that's like the typical Russian blocks of flats. I miss that. You can literally. So uh, look at the, uh, look the other side. Other yeah. side? Yep. Yeah. Well, you're looking right. Uh, it's a little delay on stream. Yeah, yeah. What should I be looking towards? We, like what you, landmarks? You've, you've seen this tall, uh, tall building. Um, you've seen this tall yellow building. Yes, yes, I see it. Uh, so you should turn to it, and then you should go down street. All right. Just a little bit, because my 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 apartment is just right after this tall building. Okay. Like, um, yeah, it's right here. Um, you're basically looking at it. It's just after this small. Well, it's like. Hey, Veronica, um, is that you? It's, it's, it's... I found you. Look. <laughs> Are you wearing your Hadidas oh, with your Nikes? <laughs> that's not. That's <laughs> just kidding. Of my neighbors. <laughs> your neighbors. Oh, uh, man. Basically, uh, this uh, white with yellow building, uh, weird shaped, uh, just right after the... Yeah, yeah, I see it. The stripey houses. one. No, no, uh, yes, right, this one, to the right, to the right of this one. Not stripey one, but to the right, it's, it's, it's a tall building as well, but it has, you know, this shape of letter... Right. Okay. Yeah, this one. This is basically you're just looking at me, um, and I'm dressed <laughs> up. Uh, <laughs> View in quickly. <laughs> Zoom in. <laughs> Put some hard base on. Do they like hard base? Is that a thing, or is it just like a stereotype? Like, I guess it depends on person to person, right? But you know, people uh, which are depicted in this video, uh, they yeah. usually listen to some totally different type of music it's like a rap yeah yeah, yeah. i've but, heard it before know, i like it because i yeah <laughs> and i mean it's relaxing just wearing your adidas tracksuit pants but apparently everyone wears that you know probably and actually <laughs> uh, this looks uh, this looks um uh, like uh, several years old yeah it As is from 2017 yeah, yeah. two years and yeah, and you if actually if you look into the center of my city it's it actually looks really good uh it it's sort of like um st petersburg course because it was okay. built is that your fuel um so basically so in the city so if it, i go it, all the way down right um that beautiful street and one beautiful Building, oh, which is I I really hope this is Google's fault and not that this building is actually warped like this. <laughs> I'm gonna assume that's Google because <laughs> yeah, I, look I, at I that. Hope, I hope as well. Shit. I hope so as well. What happened? No, I think it's Google. And they have ah, oh, they have cables running. And this is a weird-looking building. This design, like I haven't seen anything like this before. Is that rust on that building? It looks like they're playing Rust. No. They upgraded to sheet metal. <laughs> <laughs> Everything else looks fine uh, except that it, one. It's wood, that it's one. wood. It's wood. It's wood. Oh, wood. All oh, right. right. But that design, like the it's whole cool. column and everything, is really cool. Oh, you sent me another link. I sent you the link from the very center of, of my city. Um, it has beautiful buildings which were built after St. Petersburg's model. Um. Oh, there we go. Pizza restaurant. Put me there, please. Mama. Mama pizza. Maroma. 
Roma Roma. Oh, city. Oh, hello. But looks nice. A bit I more modern. Was linking to, yeah, but I was linking to some different place. So, uh, just go to the to the bus. Uh, you've seen the bus. Uh, Let me see. You sent me this link, which is an overview. But this I'm just outside of some um, gym looks like a gym no no Should be. not a gym it's way more modern than the other places geez look at that tiling I hope I can better I'm not sure if it works. He looks like he gyms. Uh, ooh, that's a long link. So, so Let basically, if you if you go this way to to the bus, um, if you go to the bus and turn left, but it, we have a delay, so I can't explain mm, you. Yeah. No, I'm here. Uh, I'm here. You know, it's, it's I got the one that you showed me. It's the right one. Yeah. So, look at the little bit. The side. Are those tramways? Trams? Yes, trams. So basically, this this um, pinkish, like peach colored thing is the yeah. one I wanted you to. Oh look wow! At. From it's 1914. Very it's from 19th century. Yeah. Now I'm just looking at the number that's on it. it says 1914. So you can get a little closer. Uh, of Shumov Brothers, um, it was traders and gold miners. Oh wow, okay, so like very historical, they've kept it. And now uh, we have um, FSB there, service, so like FBI of Russia. <laughs> FBI? <laughs> Wait, in that building? Uh, they're, um, they're like burning governing uh oh no and the window is open are they spying on me i'm looking at them but they look at me <laughs> they already know everything about you you know oh god yes because you're the agent virani you're trying to teach me react so that i can code for them <laughs> it's busted my evil plan it's <laughs> called my That's superiors cool. and <laughs> Am I doing good? Are they impressed with my progress so far? What do they think about the statement of learning React and Redux in a week? It's so hard. <laughs> I expect them to be saying something like... Uh, I don't know. What would they say? Uh, hmm. Never is much now. That was really good. That was really good. <laughs> but thanks for sharing this uh, with me, Verani. I appreciate it. So uh, we have many buildings like this. I mean, which look uh, from 19th century. Um, yeah, and I see you got a big park there. That our is. Uh, it's it, it, it's square actually. It is it is a Lenin square. Oh, we have a big. <gasps> no, 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 not this one. This is this one is a park, right? Yeah. No, the, this uh, just reminded me of Call of Duty. Remember, I think it was in Pripyat where you had uh, they never. Yeah, they never opened the uh, uh, the Ferris wheel, and I'm looking at a Ferris wheel now <laughs> in this square, and there's an aeroplane in the square. Whoa, that's something you don't. See you always. To... So different. Interesting. I love the different cultures. Uh, this is a monument to our famous Russian actor. Now, what about the bear with the guy in the Ushanka? Um, I think it's a monument to Anders of our city. Okay, yeah, because that's quite old. You can it's see that's exactly. cool. 
Kazakh, right, yeah. And if I remember correctly, yeah, Pripyat is not part of Russia. That's Ukraine, right? It's Ukraine, Ukraine. It's or it borders, it's depending Ukraine. on how large. It 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 borders with Belarus. Okay, yeah. I know where that is. So, uh, yeah. So basically, um, was, uh, you just yeah. hovered over it. This was the square, city square. We have a big Lenin standing standing over. There. Sorry, looking don't mind me. Prepared. It's it's very it's to the left. It's now I was looking at Chim. I was looking at Chim. Yeah, Pripyat is where am I now? My, that's Finland. I'm trying to Below look for names. Below left, 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 left. Lake Onega, close to that. Where am I? Is this still Russia? Uh, Onega. That's... Yes, it's still Russia. It's Saint Petersburg. Oh, you guys border with Finland? I had no idea. Like I'm literally learning. I know this is crazy, but I had no idea. You guys border with Finland. And we had a war with them. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm not surprised. You're bordering with them. <laughs> That's crazy. This, um, like, the, this yeah, there's Estonia. Mm. Which one? World War Two. Um, o Onega, which is really next to next to this Saint Petersburg Lagoda. Oh, Ladoga, yeah. Um, it was really famous because when St. Petersburg was surrounded by Nat Nazis troops, um, mm. this lake, the frozen lake, was the road of life, so to say. Um, people were risking their lives and... and to oil, basically get out. Uh, to, uh, they couldn't really get out provide some food and, and some yeah but it was frozen right so they could because it was heavily heavily um, bombarded mm. so and do you watch Game of Thrones so we... I'm eager to watch the last episode Okay, no, because why I'm asking is why does St. Petersburg just remind me of King's Landing? Like, even the position here, where it's like by the ocean, why does it remind me of King's Landing? <laughs> oh, yeah, it could remind of, of King's Landing. <laughs> it's been, it it's is been super Russia. dense! What? Oh. Yeah, I know, it's a capital, but I mean, it's dense, like, packed, like, sardines. I mean, it doesn't look like that, I mean, from the map Moscow. point of view, it's like, perfectly um yeah not, not st petersburg moscow i mean um See? st petersburg is like perfectly engineered like every bit of um spaces it's like grids like uh, wow um, I, I i wanted you to notice that my city is also grid based very heavily so it, it's very structured so oh, this is beautiful i never Street. saw this like what So, uh, if you have a, a, a quick look, um, if you have a quick look uh, in another tab, probably at my city, you'll yeah. be surprised uh, that it looks really similar to uh, um, where is where Saint Petersburg is and where my city is. Uh, it's like <laughs> one thousand kilometers or something. But oh, the grid base, yeah. Yeah. So you see. Um, uh, oh yeah, that is quite a bit. So did they model it after that or something? I mean, even this, I'm assuming this is like an industrial area. Oh no, it's not. There's a high school there. It is the central central part of the city. Uh, this one is um, is like outskirts. Zabalikalski, Privos. Uh, right? Yeah, it's it's the net of our of our supermarkets, mostly food okay. supermarkets. <laughs> you have a federal tax service. <laughs> uh, of course. Wow. We do. <laughs> now I'm just like they tax you. I know uh, taxes so, isn't um, that high. Hmm? Our my city is uh, 350 years old or something. 
and it was modeled after St. Petersburg by people who were uh, sent here. So my region is mostly like um, a prison region, so to say. So many famous uh, people who were against Russian government, they were sent here um, to work and to die. Wow. Uh, like um, e famous writers, many famous uh, philosophers or like so maybe priests in 1812 they rebelled against Russia a Russian government and they were they they were really intelligent people highly intelligent people and <laughs> they were sent here and they brought a lot of <gasps> sorry I think I found where I want to live um doesn't have a name. I don't want to live there. <laughs> <laughs> but it's got jets! And you can actually see them. Like, they literally... I thought they would be in hangars. You can, like, literally see them. Why are they parked like that? Just four. Or are they moving? That's weird. And there's helicopters. They're literally on the helipads. That's so weird. They're, like, in the designated area. But there's no, like, cover. No nothing. It's just open. Is that like a military base? I have no idea about this. Um, it's the, I think it's the the airport, but it has section of military. Uh, and this right here, I think, is um, the helicopter factory or something. We have okay. one here. Yeah, I see. There's some kind of what is that? Um, Voinskaya chest. Um, it's the military, um, or... Should probably stop looking at this, otherwise your FSB is gonna start. <laughs> Let's go back, back, back to the you city. Know, if, what? It's on, if, if it's on Google Maps, <laughs> you can look at it. Yeah, what is this, by the way? I, there's probably a delay, but you eventually see it. But it looks like a cross, and there's lots of trees, and it could be a hospital. Uh, yeah, right. This is a newly built um, hospital for, like, uh, how do I call it? Like, um, for, for you know, little babies and for women okay. to pediatrics give birth probably to babies. Okay, yeah. Not truly really pediatrics, but it's like for very, 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 very small babies. So okay, just newborns for newborns. Wow, they have a whole hospital just for that. That's cool. And there's a lot of trees. Jeez, like, wh wow, a lot of trees. It's like next next to my my place. I can just literally um, spend five minutes and I'm <laughs> and so on. There's a lot of hospitals. Surprisingly, you got the Krayevaya Djetska. Uh, oh, that's a children's hospital. Uh, yeah, uh, Children. Ever, I live in a very hospital dense place. We ha I have um, the skin skin hospital, the Zabaikalski Christ, so the whole region, the main hospital of our region. Right. Child hospital and the cancer center um, and a little bit, a little of. Um, yeah, but I mean, for a small town, like, if I zoom out, how tiny it that is, is it, it, compared it's to Russia as a whole. Region. Yeah, but I mean, if I zoom out, compared, oh, like, it's a speck compared to Russia. That's insane. And there's so much in it. And, and look where the next big city is. I mean, you see Chita, and you have Ulanode, and you have yeah. Irkutsk. And this, this is hundreds of kilometer, kilometers, so... Oh wow, so something like Antipika is far? Antipika is um, is just a suburb. Oh, okay. Oh, capitals you mean, so... And you you actually can see my hometown. Uh, it, it was on the right and on the bottom right. It's called Karunskaya. Karunskaya? Do I need to be it's zoomed just... in more? No, 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 no. Just to the right, 
just follow the road, follow the road, and you'll see Karumska on the right. Is it close to Nari and Talash? Huh? No, 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 below. Below, okay. Am I getting closer from by Buryatskaya? So basically, you have. What do you say it's called again? Almost. Basically, you're, you're looking at it. Your cursor was really. really what was it called again? To the right. What right. was its name though? To the upper right. Yeah, but the name. Okay. I think it's it's dropping. It's like oh. For some reason. Probably. Uh, because you're probably watching my stream, that's, cool. that's why. <laughs> no, no, no. That takes four minutes. Using web, web Discord. Oh. Okay. So, sorry. What did you say it was again? I didn't get that at all. So the name was Karim Square. Okay. You get me? Yeah, yeah, I did. Oh, yeah. Here it is. Here it is. This There's is hometown. hometown. It's like you got a train Voxal. Uh, and it is actually the only. Uh, oh, the is only that a highway? Point. No, that's no, a train no, yard, no, right? A, that's all yes, trains. Because we have a major station here. Uh, from here, trains go to China. Yeah, I see that. So major that's like the big place. Station. Is that the sea? Uh, we are kind of important. No, no, it's not the sea. The, the, okay. the closest sea is like. 2,000 kilometers away. Or then what am I looking at? Is it just ice? It, ju it just looks weird. We're yeah, looking it's... at the forest. And, and not not really forest, you're just looking at the steep, I think it's called. Okay. Basically plains uh, with uh, small, small mountains. <laughs> it looks like there's a shadow here, it's like someone just <laughs> put a <laughs> satellite. <laughs> Uh, okay, so then that train, oof, yeah, it goes all the way, and there's no real towns. The first major town it seems to stop at is, um, it's not loading. Don't call it major, it's just a small, small village, <laughs> you know? Yeah. I can literally oh, yeah, yeah. travel small. for a for hundred kilometers and meet no village part of Russia so wow. you can you can travel 200 kilometers and meet it almost looks like Fast. nuclear radiation here like the land is a bit purple a bit red the trees are a bit yellow and green and all different colors well, satellites I think oh, okay <laughs> yes yeah, sure people here Totally, totally not weird. <laughs> totally not weird. There's nothing going on here. This is not I, a. I, I can swear. I can swear on all my, with all my <laughs> three hands and. <laughs> oh wow! Yeah. So it goes fuck forever. And then yeah. Savino. Yeah. Oh, God no. One. I'm not even gonna try. I'm done. It's I'm done. Russia is too big. <laughs> Russia is too big. <laughs> Oh, uh, at least you can, you have everything. Railroad. The Trans-Siberian Railroad, yeah, yeah. Wow, well thank you for that, my mind. I don't know what's bigger now, React or that. Wow. <laughs> thank you for taking the time to check it out. I hope yeah, I didn't spoil spoil your stream with my horrible pronunciation. I no, no, of course not. English for, for, for a long time, so my, my mouth is rusty. <laughs> no, it was great. I'm just uh, surprised. Where is the, uh, the the heavy, thick Russian accent? Can you do that still? Like, if you put it on, can you do a, a typical Russian accent? Oh, if if you if you want me to speak with <laughs> this Russian accent, I can totally do it for you. But I no. don't think you I don't think you want me speaking like that. Is that again? Because um, I know obviously if they can just barely speak English. That's probably how they'll sound, but like, what is a typical accent sound if they're trying to speak English? Because you obviously don't have it. You never had it, well, since I've spoken um, to you. Well, um, if you try to talk English, 
Uh, I th I think it would sound like this. Now you sound French. <laughs> well, well, probably, probably. <laughs> but if you try to to speak English with with, with Russian accent uh, and try to imitate a little bit, it would sound like this. What causes that then? We, like um, we don't have we don't have this uh, w sound, so w, many yeah. Russians confuse w and v. And especially the J, like I, that's the biggest one in Croatian. Like the J is a Y, a Y, and then the L J is a Ly, Ly, Lyubov. Yeah, we have this, we have this, um, but in English we, you don't have this uh, no. sound actually. Um, yeah. So one of the major problems for Russians is this, um, this is very difficult because usually say or something like think or sing think and this instead of this yeah because you got the z so, and the z it sounds yeah how did you did you have to just actively train did you speak like that with the uh with the accent in the beginning or i don't really remember but um i tried to speak correctly so a mm. teacher uh, my my teacher was uh, telling how to do it properly and also my mother used to be a teacher of french and, and english okay but she's been out of practice for for a long time but she you know she had to teach me some stuff when i was really young little boy so when i when i got to school um, i didn't have much problems with it but still i speaking a decent English because um, my, my school was nothing ordinary you know um, and many things I learned were learned in, in university right you know is American science American study um, and many things I get fixed there so obviously not a, not all of them because I still speak with Russian accent but it's not just really thick yeah. But um, it's like this I sound, uh, which is this. So I, I hope I'm saying it more or less correctly. Yeah, no, definitely. Um, That's why I'm like amazed. It's like you have uh, to put that actual effort in. I, but it was really difficult because we don't have this one uh, in in our in our teacher in my school. Uh, she never taught how to properly pronounce and e sound. Yeah, so it's sound like learning a whole new sound. I I used to say this and this, <laughs> which sounds like French. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Um. I had to. Learn yeah. So this you gotta say the, and this. The, the. And. And get get rid of of this you know this mixture of so how does it affect your russian does it affect your russian at all now that you have to focus on that oh wow okay so i it's just it's like i have two different uh mouth okay. so uh, it's not really comfortable for me to switch quickly switch between languages if I if I speak Russian and I need to say something in English to my Russian friends, I usually don't even uh, and I just typical Russian in your movies. <laughs> right, so yeah, you actually have to get him. <laughs> wow. Yeah, and vice versa, you could hear me um, announcing Vladivostok with English accent. Obviously, because it's really not comfortable for me to switch and to say Vladivostok in between my English speech. Yeah, because then you're gonna mess up and have a bit of Russian in there again. Yeah, I get it. It's almost like French, where you have to kind of relax and get your l's and your r's like rolling. You kind of just get into that, I guess, speech mood, if that's a thing. <laughs> it, it's it's a different speech mode. 
Yeah, and but so I guess French comes a bit easier for you then uh, with Russian, right? Maybe, but not really. Uh, they have uh, subtle differences which are driving me mad. <laughs> it's like, in, in the end of the words, they don't. So it's like, Kamrad. Um, so, com comrade, obviously. Yeah. Uh, just giving you the example. Um, comrade, uh, we, w we would say like, comrade. Comrade, yeah. End, although, although there is a D, and in French they would say, camarade. Yeah. Uh, uh, de, de. Because a D would be like a heavy sound. Yeah, and it's, it's driving me mad. <laughs> uh, Think that French is a difficult language for. Me. Yeah, so, I think say, for everyone that's not I French. <laughs> we. Like the word I ridiculous French. is a French word. <laughs> ridiculous. Ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, uh, I remember trying for all of like three lessons, and I just gave up. I was just like, it's fine. I would just forever be bad at it. I couldn't even say, I think it was uh, Je m'appelle Philippe und je habite Cape Town. Like, I, I understand that that's how you say it, but my pronunciation was just awful. Je, je, je m'appelle, je, je m'appelle? Something similar. Yeah. <laughs> je, je m'appelle, je, je m'appelle, je m'appelle, je m'appelle Dima. Dima. <laughs> oh. No, I'm fine. I, I think I would honestly be better off. You've heard me with my Russian pronunciation. I think I'd be better off learning Russian than I would uh, French. I have, I, I'm actually quite amazed with your Russian pronunciation because uh, you have a grasp of many different sounds we, uh, which we have, like this y sound or... Yeah, because I told uh, you, I'm going to preach on Hrvatsky. I understand язык. So I can speak, um, well, mix of uh, Croatian, I mean, I Bosnian. I understand your Croatian. Yeah, uh, I can. Yeah. Well, not 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 knowing Croatian language, I can understand you. And Some similarities, yeah. <laughs> it's cool, yeah, because it's former Yugoslavian, and if you go back, so obviously the USSR was back then. You had Yugoslavian, you had Russian, but I wonder if you trace it further yeah, where it goes. Like eh? David. And it even goes further. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Because um, you know what's interesting? Um, it, uh, Yugoslavia was uh, Bosnia, Serbia, and Croatia. And Serbia, I think, is the only one. I could be wrong. But I think Serbia is the one that uses Cyrillic. But um, Bosnians and Croatians don't. And that's what confuses me. Because I can read and write in Croatian or Bosnian. It's just a dialect that's different. But I can't read Cyrillic. So I struggle. Like some words I do know. But I wonder if that Cyrillic is the same as the Russian Cyrillic. Like if I show you Serbian. Let me see if I find you Serbian Cyrillic. If it's the same. Oops, hold on. I'll be back. Sorry. Uh, my... Yeah, if I send you this, um, I'll send it to you directly. Does it's this like... Different. Could you understand that? Yep. It's basically... almost. So if I send this to you, which is Serbian, does this make any sense to you? Um, Even if it doesn't make sense, you can pick up words, right? And piece it together. Yeah, yes, yes. Ask me if I can understand this writing or something yeah this would be in russian right right um a little bit and grammar is wrong word. but yeah the syntax the syntax the word order right right yeah it's a little bit still correct okay 
Yeah, so that's the difference, really. So, you, uh, in what order you put the words, uh, it's still correct. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. As long as you can understand it, so that's why you probably understand. Because if you can read that alphabet, the speaking, the sound is the same. It's just they use Cyrillic versus the Alexic. is it? Alexic is different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that would be confusing for me, but I guess that's why it's nice. The What's it called? The um, ah, uh, there's a term for it. Uh, not Cyrillic, because you c obviously Russian is in Cyrillic. But what is when you use? It's not the English words. Is it Latin characters? I'm trying to think of the term now. There's a name for it. Rani. You gone? And Verani's gone. <laughs> I think the FSB got to him. Oh dear. Um Hmm. Should we be worried? Should we should we send a a search party after our Beloved comment. Oh, oh, he's back. Hey, I thought the FSB got to you. Or maybe they did, and they're briefing you. <laughs> uh, so, so I, I just closed the Discord tab. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. Uh, I was trying to figure out what, uh, the difference. You guys can write in Cyrillic, but what happens when you don't? Um, you use Latin characters, or what is it? In, Ru in Russian, we don't use. Um but in uh, in other languages, well, probably they use some old uh, Russian. Uh, old no, I mean in Russian you type it's Cyrillic, is it not? Uh, yeah, in Russian we have Cyrillic. We have yeah. No. What I mean, what is this? If I if I type like this, what is this? That's Russian too. But what do you call that? That's not. It doesn't have the. It's called translate. 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 Yeah, transliteration. Oh. Um, it, so is it like English um, alphabet? Yes. We can write uh, uh, Russian words using Latin alphabet, but it's not really comfortable for us to read. Okay. Can most Russians you know, um, like, write like that? Um, not really most of them, but many, many can. Okay. To back then, when we had uh, unlocalized uh, telephones or something, <laughs> you know, we couldn't yeah. type in Russian words, and we had to <laughs> type in, in Latin. Right. Yeah, because so many of my friends, when they see the word, they think ah, pubet, pubet, and I'm just like face palming. It's like, no, th that's a P, and the one that looks like a P, wait for it, that's an R. <laughs> Privet. I'm obviously yeah. thinking of Privet. Uh, and it looks like an NP, so they see yeah. MPU, Npubet. Yes, Npubet, everyone. Hello, Npubet. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's literally the example so, there of Cyrillic. Just a second before I close my Discord tab, uh, I, I was telling this story that uh, Russian and Ukrainian and the rest of Slavic languages, they have um, many differences. Yeah. So Ukrainian and um, Czech and all, all other Slavic languages, they have, uh, they are pretty similar. Stands out. Yeah, I remember actually there was a woman from Russia. She was on holiday uh, visiting, I think it was her son. I was at a, uh, a, a hot bath and she couldn't speak a word of english so i realized she was russian and i was trying to speak and, and it's awkward because she can understand me but then she'll say some words and, and i can't understand them like words here and there i can and it's like we're having a bit of mimes and charades we're using like hand gestures and i'm using words you, you know almost like basic things like aha drug drug uh uh um vodka vodka uh yeah, pichu yeah, you know what I mean? We're like <laughs> using, but it's amazing how we're trying to communicate. That was really cool. The, mo 
the most amazing part is that you have communicated. Uh, so, some some linguists they say that it's not really about the words; it's about mm. the context. So basically, um, th th there is an example. So imagine you are on the beach and um, uh, some family. I don't know from instance and you don't speak any common language want you to look after their their belongings while they are swimming um, and explain you in their language by just showing like telling something and you wouldn't understand a word but you would understand the message yeah, that's amazing. Like that, the language of human part about language. Yeah, that it's, is it's true. The language of context, because you're in the same situation with the same things, and you go through the same experience. And understand. But I wonder this. what makes it that Russians can understand me, but I can't understand them. Is just Russian a more advanced form of the language I'm using? Probably, probably, and also because. You know, you you know some Serbian or or whatever whatever have you, uh, but the, the difference between Russian and all these languages is huge. I have right, my yeah. grandmother from Western Ukraine, and I can understand a little bit of Ukrainian, and I can speak a little bit, just just a tiny bit, but this helped me a lot when I was once in Czech Republic. Uh, I could understand people if they fully. So yeah, I, could. I think those common terms. You're right. Like I could speak now, and maybe you wouldn't understand me word for word. But if I say keywords like "ya sam sarana Twitch," "ya streamam sa react," "na free code camp," you would like pick up those keywords that I used, and you would already know. Okay, Twitch stream, uh, react, free code camp, then you could kind of piece together what I'm trying to say. Even if, you know, the blanks, like, you know, you draw blanks here and there, you kind of make sense. You know, the funny thing, uh, it's it's mostly the way foreign uh, people read. Uh, uh, it's it's the, the tech of reading books, because yeah. you can just look up every word in a dictionary. I and know it. Like you're reading one book you can just understand the meaning of the word out of the context out out of the surrounding words and mm -hmm. uh, or whatever and you can understand this and some people like me uh, which have some sort of a talent to learning foreign languages uh, they have this language feeling you know when you just in something but you, you have a feeling it like could this. be this or it could be that. Yeah, yeah. So give me, give me a random sentence in Russian, because like, I really don't know Russian. So let me see if I can figure it out. Хотел пойти спать, но остался поговорить с тобой. Hmm. You said something about speaking, and then the but part made me think something about sleeping, but I don't think you said anything related to that. Can you say it again? You, you, um, я хотел пойти спать. I, I am going. It almost sounds like you said I am going. Я, yeah. oh, I want to. Спать. I want to go sleep. Спать. Но остался поговорить с тобой. Остался поговорить с тобой. But I'm still talking to you. It's something talking. But still talking to you. Uh, you're just almost correct. So I wanted to go to sleep, but I stayed. <laughs> yeah, because it's the boy. The boy is like with you, to you. That's with you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with you. Astalse? It's just uh, stayed or remained. Okay. Wow. What? That wasn't too bad. Yeah, but the Russians would have to explain it to me a few times and probably not have a thick accent. <laughs> oh, 
well, you you would totally understand uh, if that if what sorry totally, if, if you ask them to repeat sometime or uh, twice or three times, you would understand. Yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. It's not that bad. Okay. Surprisingly, I definitely yeah. The reading part is the hard part. Um, you would have to literally just know the uh, the uh, alphabet really, that the P's and R and stuff like that. If you were reading and you were reading correctly, yeah. When you were looking at, at at the Google Maps, the map, yeah. I know some parts. I guess just practice and repetition really. It's almost. Would you say it's like almost um, like a cipher? Or well, not really. You know what I mean? Like from English to Russian. Well, I would say that any language is a code. Hmm. And then you have a common uh, code, which just happens to be English. Yes. Because it's like so common. Just encode your thoughts in common code. And you can transfer knowledge and everything using this common code so this is this is um, one theory of linguists what language is and I like it yeah that is really cool it's, but it's, yeah it's, it's tightly connected with the way you know that lang language forms your thinking hmm we used to have Latin cool. as a base before do you think we would have English now considering how widespread it is like I mean as far as Russia and China already speaking English I'm not sure you know in 19th century we had French the yeah show the world and now we have English and so it might change sure yeah it can change it's mm. we, we we are really far away from um, how it's how it's called uh, lingua lingua franca Oh wow! And that came from the Franks itself. Uh, no, the, 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 this came from Latin, I think. Latin, right? Uh, um, so it's like widespread. It's to make yeah, so that language. people that could communicate in one language. And thank God it's English right now, not Chinese <laughs> or something. And I, I I don't have anything against Chinese people or something, but their writing is is terrible for me i couldn't get to it <laughs> the characters yeah i would also <laughs> rather learn cyrillic oh wow wow i i studied chinese for one year i'm i'm not chinese but that i could have sworn i was speaking to someone chinese right now that pronunciation, <laughs> like maybe the context was wrong, but I think it's all about that pronunciation. Wow. I tried to, I tried to put a lot of effort into mastering the pronunciation. So um, I, I still remember, you know, I, I've learned Chinese like five years ago, but I still remember that short, short text we we uh, we learn by heart. Yeah. Um, wait, wait a second. Ma he mei mei mai cai. Ma ma mai le. Pai cai he tu dou. Wow. For <laughs> text about mama, um, mama, <laughs> in, uh, yeah. mother, um, going to market and buying. Um, I buying feel bad. The only thing I know is the Gong Chi Fa Chai Jin Yin Koi Le. And the pronunciation is probably wrong, but that is what I remember when it was New Year's. For the Chinese, of course. <laughs> uh, I think it was uh, uh, Merry Christmas or something, right? Uh, New Year's. A New Year's, um, I mean, the sentence you, you, you said. Yes. Yeah. Uh, of having have a happy and a prosperous New Year, new year wasn't it? Uh, yes. From what I remember, it's years ago. But just that pronunciation sounded so happy. And I think I get the Jin Jin Yin Jin Yin Kuai Le. 
I'm not Quite really sure how, how it's written in, um, in, uh, in Chinese. Can you read Chinese? Uh, a little bit. Uh, th this, Wh this which one? Simplified or traditional? I studied both. Okay. Because but I can't read right now because it it's it it was um it was um H here's that sentence I was doing the jinin kuai le in xinian kuai le yeah yeah there you go S um, wait a second xinian xinian kuai le yeah that's what it sounds like that's what it should sound like or guan nian hao Ni hao. Uh, it's <laughs> ni hao, yeah. I thought ni hao was uh, hello, greeting, is it not? It's not ni hao. It's nian, nian hao. Nian oh, the year. nian, nian. Yeah, it's good. Hao. Okay, but ni hao is hello, right? Ni hao, right? Uh, it's hello. Ni I remember hao. an insult. It's, it's there was an um, insult. I, I don't know if it was like a common thing, but it, it was. It almost sounded yeah, like. No, it sounded like ni arbg. There was like arb. It's like arb ni arbg. I, I don't really know. I know only one swear, <laughs> swear uh, <laughs> phrase in, in Chinese, and it's how ni ma. But what I like is how animated they get. You know what I mean? Like Russian is animated too, but like the Chinese like take it to the next level. Yeah, because they have these tonal system, which which is like tones of speech. It's like. Um, you know the funny thing, uh, saying buying, buy and sell, the different yeah. words for us. But in Chinese, one is another one is my. But oh, say the first one again. Of voice, my. Oh, so I the tone in your voice changes it. So yeah, there is four tones and like ma, ma, <laughs> ma. Ma. So the first one is like the high, high, um, a straight ma. When you are asking a question, ma. Or you you couldn't hear something and you're asking like what? Yeah, like say again. Yeah. Oh, so like everything is already ma. in your the way you say it. That's cool. Third one is ma. It's like very deep low with high end but this high end is usually dropped uh, if there is words like mama like it is like different and the fourth one is ma it's like dropping it wow it's it's very uh, one. and also <laughs> there is a fifth one which is like neutral one like like well so quite a mm. and have any tone and it's like the Mandarin Chinese, but Tone Chinese, which is spoken in Hong Kong. Oh, well, That's thank you like for that. Nine, That's... nine, nine tones, I, I think, or nine. It's, God, it's um... yeah, and they grow up with that, so it's fine. Imagine being a foreigner. <laughs> uh, I imagine being a foreigner <laughs> <in> Chinese. <laughs> It's difficult uh, to listen to 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 understand what they're saying. Mm. Once you spend some time, you're, you you can just you don't think about it. Send it. Right. Yeah. All right. Well, Virani, geez, I need to make a. Yeah, quite an education. I was about to say we should like make it different stream about like languages linguistics <laughs> like for polyglots <laughs> i think there's a lot wow thank you that went from looking at where you currently stay to your hometown to the uh, fkb what the skb not the <laughs> uh, rgb <laughs> what kgb <laughs> kgb yeah fss uh, oh, God. in russian but fss yeah, thanks yeah. for taking the time talking with me. Of course, I appreciate it. And yeah, hopefully it helps your English as well. It's really great. It does, because I can feel my mouth 
like uh, coming out of out of this slumber, <laughs> slumber. Good. And Oosh. trying to say sounds in a proper way. Uh, yeah. So. Yeah. Have a good well, stream. Uh, I'm thank you. Good. Yeah, I'm gonna be off as well, pretty much. I think I'm like done. The amount that I took in, it's not just React, it's like the Russian stuff and like all this, like my mind has to process now. <laughs> but I'm gonna end it right. off here as well. But Verani, thank you, and hopefully we'll chat again sometime. It was really great having you. Sure, sure. Talk to you okay. later. Okay, talk later. Bye, Verani. Bye. All right, guys. Well,. I know that wasn't really streaming related, but it was quite educational. It was fun for me at least, and I don't know whether or not you guys would have liked that. Hopefully you would. It was a very cultural experience. I got to... yeah, my geography sucks, so being able to learn about Russia and all the different parts, and where Virani currently resides and his hometown, and yeah, just the different languages. It's amazing. So I enjoyed that experience. Uh, but tomorrow we'll be back with the code. Um, continuing with React and hopefully getting on to Redux. Verani, thank you once again for dropping by. I really appreciate it. I hope you manage to sleep well. And to everyone else, hope you keep well. And we will ba be back on the next episode tomorrow. So I'm now slurring my words even. <laughs> even I had to go and pick up new languages and pronunciations. So I can trip you up. But uh, yeah, until tomorrow. Bye for now.